Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to the next of our videos in our series on IGCSE Geography. This is episode 3.1. In today's lesson, we will be learning about economic change. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. For this video let's talk about economic change. Firstly, we need to talk about the different sectors of the economy. The primary sector of the economy is the sector making direct use of, or, exploiting natural resources. This includes agriculture, forestry, fishing, and mining. Secondary industries are those that take the raw materials produced by the primary sector and process them into manufactured goods and products. Examples of secondary industries include heavy manufacturing, light manufacturing, food processing, oil refining, and energy production. The tertiary sector is also called the service sector and involves the selling of services and skills. They can also involve selling goods and products from primary and secondary industries. Examples of tertiary employment include health service, transportation, education, entertainment, tourism, finance, sales and retail. The biggest area of expansion in the tertiary sector in the UK has been in financial and business services. According to government statistics, 25 years ago 1 in 10 people worked in this industry, now it is 1 in 5. The quaternary sector consists of those industries providing information services, such as computing, ICT, or information and communication technologies, consultancy, which is offering advice to businesses, as well as R&D. This stands for research and development, particularly in scientific fields. The quaternary sector is sometimes included with the tertiary sector, as they are both service sectors. The tertiary and quaternary sectors make up the largest part of the UK economy, employing 76% of the workforce. The employment structure of a country shows how the labor force is divided between the primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. Different countries have different employment structures. The employment structure of a given country can tell you quite a lot about its economy. In the richest countries, there will usually be more people working in the tertiary or quaternary sector than in the primary and secondary sectors. In the poorest countries, there tend to be more people working in the primary sector than in either the secondary or tertiary sectors. Employment structures can also change over time within the same country. Look at these two pictures of Newcastle upon Tyne, one from the 1800s and one from the 2000s. In the UK in the 1800s, most people would have been employed in the primary sector. Many people worked on the land and made their living from agriculture and related products. During the Industrial Revolution, more people were needed to build ships, work in steelmaking, and textiles. All of these jobs are found in the secondary sector. By 1900 over half of the workers in the UK were employed in secondary industries. Since 1900 mechanization meant that fewer people were required to work on the land and in industry, as machines could carry out most of the work that people previously did. Foreign industries also became more competitive and imports such as coal became more affordable. As the availability of coal declined in the UK and also became more expensive to extract, more coal was imported. This led to a further decline in primary sector employment in the UK. The demand for work increased in schools, hospitals, and retail industries. Many people left the rural areas in search of jobs in the towns and cities. By the year 2000 over half of the UK workforce were employed in tertiary industries and only a small number were employed in primary industries. This has changed the work that people do and also where they work. Quaternary industries are a relatively new concept, and it is only recently that they have been added to these figures. Different industries require different inputs. Industries are more likely to locate where these inputs are readily and cheaply available. Factors that influence where an industry locates include Power supply 
Communications, including transport, telecommunications. Labor supply, including workers with the right skills. Access to market, where the goods are sold. Grants and financial incentives, usually from governments. Raw materials. These are two special cases of industrial location. Agglomeration is when a number of producers in the same or related industries group themselves together. They do this to benefit from local skill pools, economies of scale or the prowess of a locality in a particular field. An example is a large number of financial services companies, for example, banks and insurance companies, which are headquartered in the City of London. Footloose industries are those that are less dependent on factors that tie them to a specific geographical location. Unlike manufacturing industries, tertiary, or services companies do not have to be near a source of raw materials. As long as they have suitable transport, energy, and communications links, they can locate themselves anywhere in the world. Examples of footloose industries are computer software development, telephone sales, and call centers. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.